mind. Let us first think what is vibration. So, third unit title is free vibrations. Okay, whatever it is. Free vibrations, free damped vibrations. We will see what it is. Uh, we all experience vibrations in everyday life. Okay, we have come across so many types of vibration in so many different things that we see in everyday. I will give you some of the examples that you see in everyday life. What is a vibration? Okay. So, what is the necessity? First, first think what are all vibrations that you see in everyday life. Right? I, I think most of you would have seen this. Anywhere. Any, any place. Any time. Okay. Also, vibration has enormous amount of application. In some places, vibration has use. Vibration is the outcome. But in some places, vibration is undesirable. Okay. Depends on where it is. Right. So, why is it really necessary to understand this vibration? Uh, we will go into that later. Now, just and get a feel of what is a vibration. Okay. These are totally unavoidable. You cannot 100% get rid of vibrations in all the systems. Right. The bridge example, it is a little bit uh, exaggerated. It happened. It is an accident. It happened in a, in a hanging bridge. Okay. In USA. It, it collapsed. The bridge collapsed. Uh, but even if any normally constructed concrete bridge you go and stand, if a heavy vehicle goes on the bridge, you will feel the vibration. Okay, it is. It it should vibrate. Otherwise, uh, it cannot dissipate the energy. The bridge will break. Okay, uh, vibration is desirable if it is within some limits, so that uh, it can dissipate the energy. It, bridges do vibrate. If you do not know this, if you have not felt this, go and stand in some bridge and feel it. Not know when the lockdown is over. You can feel this vibration. If you stand on the corner of a bridge and feel feel when a heavy vehicle goes on the bridge, you can feel the bridge actually vibrating. And it is very healthy for the bridge if the vibration is within the limit. Okay, so vibration is everywhere, and we, we are going to see some fundamentals about it. Okay, <coughs> introduction to vibrations. So when elastic bodies such as a spring, a beam, or a shaft is displaced from the equilibrium position by application of an external force and then released, they execute vibratory motion. Now, this is a, is a somewhat a crude definition of a free vibration. What is a free vibration? You just pull it and then release it. After releasing, you do not you do not touch the body. It keeps vibrating on itself. You do not try to stop it or you do not try to make it faster. Just pull it with the initial force, you just release it. It starts vibrating. This is a free vibration. And the name free vibration itself tells you that it is a characteristic of the particular body which is vibrating. Because after releasing the body, you are not disturbing the body. Okay. It vibrates in its own characteristic way. Okay. This is due to the reason that when a body is displaced, the internal forces in the form of elastic or strain energy are present in the body. At the release, these forces bring the body to its original position. This is somewhat like a hoop slot. Okay. Whatever energy you give to the body within the elastic limit is stored as a strain energy. You, you will study this in your DME. Okay. Theories of failure. How energy is stored in a body. What happens to it? And all those things you have to study in good detail if you want to write the great exam properly. Okay. So, how does the energy is stored as a strain energy in the lattice of the atoms? And if it does not exceed the elastic limit of the body or the yield point of the body, and when you release it, the stored energy is released. And the body comes back to its original position. If you think carefully, this is the function of a spring. Why? What is the use of a spring? You compress the spring, it stores the energy, and then when you release the load, spring comes back to its original position. What is the use of a spring if it cannot come back? It has no use. Okay. So, energy storage and releasing. Now, this doesn't happen in a single go. It keeps vibrating over a period of time for a free vibration. When a body reaches the equilibrium position, the whole of the elastic or strain energy is converted into kinetic energy due to which the body continues to move in the opposite direction. Don't worry about this. You will see this when you are deriving the formula. Okay. So, for example, if you pull a spring and then release it, what will happen? It keeps vibrating for a period of time. Okay. So, at the maximum extended position, the spring has a maximum kinetic energy, okay, because it, I mean, potential energy, because the spring is now at, before I release it, it is at rest. I have strained the lattice, energy is stored in the body, and the energy stored is proportional to the amount of deflection they have, that I have given to the spring, mgh, h is your deflection, which is potential energy. Now, when you release it, the potential energy will get converted into kinetic energy, it starts oscillating. Okay, that's what he is trying to say in the third point. Okay. Whole of the kinetic energy is again converted into static, uh, into strain energy due to which the body again returns to the equilibrium position. In this way, the vibratory motion repeats itself. Right? When the spring is vibrating or a, a, a cantilever beam is vibrating, whatever, any vibrating body, 
there is an interconversion of potential to kinetic kinetic to potential it happens so many times within a second that uh, this oscillation is possible don't worry about it now introduction to vibrations uh, so there are some important terms that you should know when you are going to study about vibration yeah, so most of you would have come across this already but it is time to refresh your memory about it okay the following terms are commonly used in connection with vibratory motions uh, period of vibration or time period. And this you can take the very simple example of a simple pendulum. From the center point, one maximum amplitude to the right, and then full amplitude to the left, and then to the mean position. Again, it's called one period. Okay. So let us see the definition. It is the time interval after which the motion is repeated itself. The period of vibration is usually expressed in seconds. One complete cycle of vibration, whatever may be the cycle, either it can be longitudinal, transverse, torsional. There are many types of vibration. One full cycle of vibration, what is the time taken in seconds? It is called as the period of vibration. Okay. Cycle. It is a motion completed during one time period. Simple pendulum. You know that very well, right? What is a simple pendulum uh, cycle of vibration? See, the pendulum is here in the center point. You just pull it up to here and release it. What will be the motion of the pendulum? It will be moving like this, like this, and then it comes back here. The time taken for this one complete motion is called time period. Okay. And the uh, cycle, the cycle of motion, this is the cycle of motion. Okay, clear? Very simple. Like that, any type of vibration, anything you come across, that is that type of vibration. The frequency, it is the number of cycles described in one second. So, very simple thing, you know this already. If let us take a very simple example, you hold a steel scale in your bench, like a cantilever beam, and then just uh, disturb it, it keeps vibrating. If you, if the length is very long, the vibration will be very slow. You can count it. Okay. So if you hold uh, some five centim for some twenty-five centimeter of the scale outside the bench and then disturb it, the vibration will be slower, so that it is possible to count how many times it is moving in a second. So five times, three times, countable with a human eye. Now that is your frequency. How many times it happens in a second? This particular periodic motion. How many times it happens in a second? For very slow vibrations like a simple pendulum, it will take some three and a half seconds for one complete vibration. Then what is frequency? Frequency is given by one by time. Okay. So one third of a second, I mean one by three is your frequency, 0 0.3. 0 0.3 times a second. That means it takes more than one second to complete uh, one, one complete vibration. So that is your frequency. Frequency is given by one by time period. It's a general formula for any anything, not only this. Uh, pendulum or whatever, any type of vibration, the general formula, frequency equal to 1 by time period of the vibration. Okay. So, these are some fundamental things you have to remember. So, what are the fundamentals? Uh, period of vibration, cycle, cycle is the characteristic motion, pattern of motion, frequency. Frequency and time, uh, frequency and time period are interrelated, reciprocal of each other. Okay. So, next is the types of vibratory motion. The following are the types of vibratory motion important from your subject point of view. Apart from this, there are some other types that you can come across in the real life, but for now we are going to constrain our uh, studies only up to this. Three are natural vibration. Let us understand what is a natural vibration. See, before reading the paragraph, you just look at this GIF image, that animation. What is happening there is, I have a tuning port. Okay, so the tuning port, I am giving an initial displacement. And then I am I am leaving it. I am not disturbing the tuning fork. I am not trying to stop it or I am not trying to do anything. How does it vibrate by itself? There is no external medium trying to stop the vibration. Okay. So that is your free vibration. Now come back to this paragraph. You read it. Free or natural vibration. When no external force acts on the body, after giving it an initial displacement, initial displacement should come from outside only. Okay. The spring will not uh, extend by itself magically. Okay. You have to give an initial displacement. And after giving that initial displacement, no external force acts on the body. Then the body is said to be under free natural vibration. Clear? So that is your free vibration. The frequency of the free vibration is called the natural frequency. Okay. I think you have come across this somewhere. Natural frequency. Okay. So if let us consider this tuning port. Right? So now, now uh, I am going to see... Uh, the tuning fork is oscillating by, let us say the tuning fork oscillates 5 times a second or 10 times a second. If the, it is thicker, it will oscillate even 500 times a second. So, the, the undisturbed vibration 
undisturbed frequency of that vibration is called its na the material's natural frequency. Okay, what will happen? This natural frequency has far-reaching significance. Just uh, just apart from studying vibrations, if I think you have heard of some term called resonance. If, let us say I have a spring, and the spring I placed it in the puppet wall of an IC engine. It is uh, getting compressed and released more than 100 times a second because of the speed of the engine. Now, if the frequency with which your spring is compressed and released matches this natural frequency, then you will have a surge or a resonance in the spring. The material will fail. Even though the material is not strained up to the elastic limit, the material will fail well within the elastic limit. Now, such a phenomenon is called resonance. Okay. So, so we have to definitely know the natural frequency of all the materials placed in a machine so that none of the material will have its natural frequency matching with the operating vibrational frequency of the particular machine, any machine. So, natural frequency of a given material is very important because it is going to completely affect the performance of your machine. Okay, so that you should know the natural frequency of all the material that you put into a particular machine. So, this comes into picture only when there is motion, okay, vibration. As long as you are in rest, no problem. Next is your forced vibration. Okay, just look at this example. When a particular periodic motion is imparted, okay, when a body, now read the paragraph, when the body vibrates under the influence of external force, then the body is said to be under forced vibration. External force applied to the body is a periodic disturbing force created by unbalance. The vibrations have same frequency as the applied force. Now, in this example, I am having a motor which is disturbing a, a beam which is hinged at the center. Okay. Now, this is a forced vibration. You are not allowing the beam to disturb, get uh, vibrate by itself. I am continuously, periodically disturbing the beam. Now, such forced vibrations we can come across in lot of machines. Free vibrations are very rare in machines and the uh, body components or the cover uh, of your machine will vibrate freely. All the working parts, the kinematic links of your machine will undergo forced vibration because they will transmit some particular motion periodically. Now, therefore, the motion that they experience, the vibration that they experience is periodic in nature. It keeps repeating itself. Now, observe the uh, difference between the first example and the second example. First example, you are just giving an initial load and you are leaving it undisturbed. Now, that is free vibration. Now, look at the second example. There is a motor and the motor, uh, if I write something on this, it will stop. The vibration, I mean, the juke will stop. So, I will not write. Just have a look here. The motor is, this, this beam is your vibrating element. And I am having a motor, a small link is connecting my motor to that vibrating element. And I am not just disturbing it once and leaving, I am continuously disturbing it in a periodic way. Now that is your forced vibration. Okay, there is a third type of vibration within your syllabus, uh, which is just very, very familiar to you. Okay, look at this example. A vibration which you are trying to slow down is called a damped vibration. Example is your shock absorber in your vehicles. Okay, if there is no damper, the small, if you see inside the shock absorber, inside the blue color spring, there is a white color dash pod. It is nothing but a piston and a cylinder arrangement with oil inside, which slows down your spring. Okay. If this is not there, your vehicle will be very uncomfortable to ride. Okay. Let us read the definition of damp vibration. When there is a reduction in amplitude over every cycle of vibration, the motion is said to be damp vibration. This is due to the fact that a certain amount of energy possessed by the vibrating system is always dissipated in overcoming frictional resistance to motion. Okay, so how this frictional resistance to motion is provided by your piston and cylinder arrangement with an oil inside. Okay, the piston will have some four holes sealing the oil. The oil can drip to the other side of the piston through the holes so that when I compress the piston along with the spring, oil will be pumped from one side of the piston to the other side, top side to bottom side. Now, this will slow down your uh, spring. Okay, there is a very famous two mark which almost out of 108 of you, 100 of you will write wrongly in the exam. What is viscous damping? Okay, I am certain even if we, even if we tell the announce the answer in the exam, all nobody will write it correctly. If you use a viscous fluid to damp a vibration, it is called viscous damping. That is the answer. That's all. Nobody will write this correctly. Okay, I am using a viscous fluid, an oil inside the piston, which is going to slow down my spring. Because the spring and the piston cylinder arrangement are coaxial and are forced to move together, the oil is pumped from one side of the piston to the other, which is going to slow down your spring. When you use a viscous fluid to damp a vibration, it is called viscous damping. What is damping? 
if you disturb a spring and leave it it will not stop with one one vibration it will keep uh, vibrating for some time okay now the amplitude of this vibration gets reduced from one cycle to other in a periodic way in a characteristic way and that uh, the where does the energy go the energy goes to the oil that is getting pumped this is called viscous damping okay so three types of vibration free natural free or natural vibration and here in this natural case you have to remember the natural frequency of a particular material each material has its own characteristic natural frequency if your uh, machine operating frequency vibration frequency and the natural frequency of a particular material in the machine matches then your machine will fail okay forced vibration periodically disturbance created by a motor or an engine or whatever uh, on the kinematic links of the machine which is which is going to move in a particular periodic way throughout the operating cycle of the machine okay third one is your damp vibration so these three are the things your third and fourth unit put together you are going to study about free vibration and free damped vibration in third unit you are going to study forced vibration and forced damped vibration in your fourth unit that's all so your entire syllabus is put together in this one slide okay now types of free vibration the third unit is about free vibration only i am not concerned about forced vibration in the third unit okay so what are all the types of uh, subdivisions in the free vibration okay so following are the three types of free vibrations are important from your syllabus point of view okay what is that consider a weightless constraint so one important assumption we make in all these mathematical calculations is that your beam or a shaft or a spring which you are considering has no mass that is an assumption the mass of the or the inertial effects of the spring or the shaft or the beam which is vibrating is neglected its mass and inertial effects are neglected and only the force or the weight which is causing the disturbance that particular magnitude of mass is considered for calculation so that is the first assumption okay consider a weightless spring or a shaft whose one end is fixed to the one end is fixed and the other end is carrying a heavy disc like a cantilever okay as shown below the system may execute one of the following three motions okay what is the first motion longitudinal vibration i'll give you a picture which tells you very clearly what is a longitudinal vibration okay so this is a longitudinal vibration let us read the definition and understand what is a longitudinal vibration when the particles of the shaft or a disc move parallel to the axis of the shaft as shown in the adjacent figure uh, then the vibrations are known as longitudinal vibrations okay so normally in a cantilever deflection in strata materials what you study uh, that is your transverse deflection but longitudinal is not like that so to, to easily understand this i have put the cantilever upside down normally how do you do a cantilever from left to right but here it is done from up to down so that you understand what is longitudinal vibration of a cantilever it is the conventional deflection of a cantilever is transverse okay when the deflection occurs parallel to your axis then that sort of a deflection is called a longitudinal deflection the length is increased or decreased okay so when the particles of the shaft are disc move parallel to the axis of the shaft as shown in adjacent figure then the vibrations are known as longitudinal in this case the shaft is elongated and shortened alternatively and thus the tensile and compressive stresses are induced alternately now this is an exaggerated image this much of deflection will not occur in a vibration okay it occurs very minutely uh, one micron or two micron but for you to understand it is shown in an exaggerated way clear okay next first is your types of free vibration first type is your longitudinal vibration okay next type transverse vibration so when the particles of a shaft or a disc move approximately perpendicular to the axis of the shaft then the vibrations are known as transverse vibration example same candle normal cantilever deflection this is put in the up to down fashion you can put it in left to right fashion conventional way what is the cantilever deflection which has a weight at the end of the shaft how it will deflect it will deflect downwards or upwards if you put the force from down to up if you put a force on the tip of the cantilever it will deflect upwards same thing i have drawn upside down this is a transverse vibration okay next is your torsional vibration okay so you are twisting the shaft okay it is not visible in the front view so i have given you a bottom view so the shaft is twisted alternatively such a type of vibration is called a torsional vibration clear so there are three types of free natural vibration free vibrations just to give you a load and then leave it it keeps acting like this over a period of time and then it comes to a stop such type of vibration where i do not disturb the beam after i give the initial force and leave it freely there are three types of vibrations such types of vibration subdivision first is your long, transverse longitudinal torsional all these three types of problems you are going to do that's why i am telling you very slowly okay longitudinal transverse 
torsional. So make it very clear. What is longitudinal? Let us refresh. So this is your longitudinal vibration. So this is your transverse vibration and torsion. You know very well what is torsion. Now such a torsional vibration is called torsional vibration. If you just twist it and leave it, it will keep oscillating over a period of time. That is your torsional vibration. Okay, we have such an experiment in our dynamics lab that we will see when we open the college. Uh, we will see that. Okay. Basic features of a vibrating system. Uh, this is some theory, theory part, some this theory story. What are all the things you need for a particular system to vibrate? Just a theoretical concept. For doing a mathematical analysis of vibrating system, it is necessary to have an idealized model of the same which is appropriately represents the system. Basic elements. What are all the things you need for a system to vibrate? A system must possess inertial element, a restoring element, or it may or may not have a damping element. What are all the, these three things? So let us take at this uh, diagram as an example. Okay, so inertial element. These are represented by the lumped masses for a rectilinear motion and the lumped ma moment of inertia for angular motion. So in this given example, there are two examples, three examples given in, in this figure. Okay, so this is your inertial element, the mass at the end of the system. Okay, so this is your inertial element. Clear? Next is your restoring element. First is your inertial element. Next is your Restoring element is your spring. The spring only brings it back. So this gives the initial disturbance required. This is what is creating the vibration. If there is no spring, then there will be no vibration because there will be no backward pull to equilibrium. So that is your restoring element. Third one is your damping element. Damping element is your shock absorber. If you do not, it may or may have, the system may have a damping element or may not have a damping element. If it has, then it will be most probably in the form of a dashboard. Okay. So you can put a tuning fork, I think you have used a tuning fork in your 12th standard physics lab. A tuning fork, you let it vibrate in the air, it has some particular frequency. The same thing, you put it into water, water will damp your tuning fork vibration. You can put it into a thicker oil, it will further slow down, it will come to rest very fast. Okay, so such elements are called damping elements, normal example. Very simple example of a damping element, your shock absorber, your bike. If you go, go and look at the back wheel of your bike. There will be two springs on each side of the bike, and the inside you will have a piston and a cylinder arrangement. That is your damping element. Okay. So these three are impo very important things. What are all the three things? Inertial element, restoring element, damping element. Inertial element is your mass. Okay. So which is disturbing? In case of a bike, you are going to sit on the bike. That is your disturbance. Restoring element, your spring, which is going to bring back to equilibrium. Okay. So third element, may, it may be present in, uh, it may not be present in all the systems. Okay. But it will be present in most of the systems. Damping element, shock absorber. Okay. So degrees of freedom. This is a, just a definition. You see, how many independent coordinates are required to completely define the position? Okay. You just look at the example. You will understand. So here, if I tell theta, you will clearly know where is the pendulum. Just theta. If I tell the theta, you know where is the pendulum. Apart from uh, considering that the length of the string is fixed, the mass of the pendulum is fixed for a given pendulum. If I just tell theta, you will know where, where the pendulum is. So that is a single degree of freedom vibrating system. If I tell why, where is the deflection length of the spring, you can tell where is the entire system located. So it is a single degree of freedom vibration. Okay. So there is another the two degree of freedom vibration where you will have, you will require two Two coordinates for completely defined. This is a compound pendulum or a double pendulum. Okay. So you need two values of theta to completely define this. Okay. Another example is two mass spring, two spring mass system. You need to specify at least two displacements, two deflections to completely define this. So degrees of freedom. Just now read the first sentence. Number of independent coordinates required to describe a vibratory system is known as degree of freedom. Very simple. Okay, so we are going to deal most probably 99% of all your problems are single degree of freedom problems. Okay, so this is taken from your Kurmi, Kurmi and Rattan also. So 23.1 to 0.4 in Kurmi and 18.4 in Rattan. 